get interested in yeah. democracy. Exactly. We want exactly. all the next generation. How many times had you been in this building before you got elected? Zero. Seriously? Uh, once. No, no, once. We did a presser. Yeah, one time. Yeah, my campaign manager was walking in and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> you know, and she's like, keep it. It's like, yeah. So we did one. We did one media thing before. So you basically election. don't know this building at all. So far this week, I haven't got lost. But yeah, last week I had a few moments where I was like, which is the best way to get to the washer? Okay. Like. <laughs> so the first time that you actually walked onto the floor of the chamber of the legislature was as an MPP. Is that right? We did a tour, so when with the swearing in, but yeah, past the you know the front row seats, basically, yeah. Can you describe for us what that moment was like as you got ushered into the chamber for the first time as a member of the legislature by your leader? Uh, pretty uh, monumental, I guess. There's so many emotions that you're going through; it's hard to put a name on just one of them. So it was exciting. It was nerve-wracking. It was uh, terrifying. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, so I use the word terasciting, you know? Terasciting. Terasciting. Terrifying and exciting. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody stood and applauded. Yeah. That doesn't happen around here very often. Okay. So what did you infer from that? I think that people are decent humans. Like, I like when we all rise. You know, there's so many moments where we're greeting a guest, somebody who's had a birthday or an achievement or a visitor who's given a, many years of service or groups that are here. Uh, to learn, so you know, I think I think there's a great respect amongst all my colleagues for a lot of important occasions. Our impression is there's not very much collegiality that goes on in these hallways. Is that a mistaken impression? I do think it is a mistaken impression. I think you know, I mean, as Greens, we always say put people before party. So what that means is we build relationships across all of the party spectrum, uh, and so I've had a great. Uh, mentor in Mike Schreiner to who is very liked and has good relationships and all the parties so it's definitely what the Green Party puts out there and what we think we're voted in for so I, I can't speak for everyone else but I think we try to make sure that on one hand we can um, kind of hold the government accountable and speak truths and put forward good solutions but also recognize when they've done something really helpful well, I saw Mike Schreiner get up in the house today, and he sort of did that. He started his speech by saying, I want to thank the government for. Yes. Now, if you want to finish the job, here's what else you can do. Exactly. So it's constructive opposition. Yeah, I think that's how we hope to earn respect across the political spectrum, is by not being just black and white and negative or positive or um, just critical 100% of the time. I think it's important that we strike a balance. I beg to inform the House that the clerk has received from the Chief Electoral Officer and laid upon the table a certificate of the by-election in the Electoral District of Kitchener Centre. When you walked in with Mike Schreiner for the first time, you took a wrong turn on the way to your seat. What happened there? Well, I, as a social worker, I always talk about the lid flipping. So, you know, in our brains, our thinking brain sometimes gets hijacked and takes a little vacation when we're under a bit of stress. So even though we'd rehearsed things and they told me about the maze and like, don't go, wait, you know, don't shake right away. We got to do this thing first. So, yeah, just the nerves. But yeah, that's OK. It helped me show my backwards robot, you know, which I know everybody really wanted to see. That was very funny, actually. Yes. <laughs> I got to do this first. <laughs> Speaker, I have the honor to present to you and to the House Ashlyn Clancy, member for the Electoral District of Kitchener Centre, who has taken the oath and signed the roll and now claims the right to take her seat. Now you're good. <laughs> Let the honorable member take her seat. Now, the first time I had to say your name on the air, I butchered it, like almost everybody yes. does, because it's spelled A-I-S, yes. L-I-N-N, -N, but you do not pronounce it Aislin, you no. pronounce it Ashlyn. Yes. So what's the story there? Well, it's funny because it's a beautiful moment in time. I was in an equity conversation as my as a school social worker, and somebody told this beautiful story about like growing up and the teacher is not saying your name properly and just going with the flow, and then we're kind of reclaiming 
pronunciation as a sign of respect. So I'm grateful that I'm, you know, here in a moment in time where people want to say your name properly. So yeah, I'm Irish. My dad was born in Ireland. And so I always say Sean, S-E-A-N. You know, we always get that S right. That's my S, the Gaelic S. So proud to be Irish and uh, proud that I'm at a moment when people are taking a moment to ask people how to pronounce their names. For the longest time, and I think I've covered every election that the Greens have run candidates, because that goes back to the 1980s. Yeah. But for the longest time, this party has only ever been able to elect one person. And you're number two. What does that mean to you? I think folks realize the importance of climate. They realize that we stand for more than just climate. They, I think I was at a moment in time where people were disenfranchised with the old line parties. You know, they kind of have their lines that they say, um, and they, they, do, they try to stand for all things instead of sticking their neck out for certain things. So um, I also am lucky to have Mike Morris, our MP, uh, voted in locally. You've got the same writing. Exactly. So people saw what it meant to elect a Green, that you have someone whose vote isn't whipped, who can speak with authenticity about the, the wishes and needs of their community and how hard he works and Mike Schreiner as well. So, you know, a, a lot of things came together in this moment to uh, build confidence that voting Green was the right decision for people. I am betting, though, that there are a lot of people who will watch this who will think, you know, if you're a member of a majority government, you can get some stuff done. If you're the member of the official opposition, you can make a lot of noise and bring some attention to things. If you're one of two in a room of 124, what can you really accomplish? What's the answer to that? Well, Mike Schreiner, when we were chatting about my, the possibility of me running said, gave me a bunch of examples about moving the needle, right? So we think about housing. He put forward a brilliant campaign on legalizing housing. I don't think that's the end. We've sparked political will. We are bringing forward solutions that aren't gonna add millions and billions of dollars to the, the budget items, you know? Um, so I think by bringing forward good solutions, by building political will, we really move the needle. And if we always say, if people wanna steal our ideas, like 407 tolls, for example, getting rid of those for truckers, if people wanna take those ideas that we bring forward and build them into their party platform, it's a compliment. We always say people before party. Of course, you know, we work behind the scenes with all the people in uh, the governing party to try to make sure we deliver for our community, make sure we're advocating for a community, but there's more to just politics than voting for something. You know, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes to shaping whatever gets put forward and also getting other work done. So you can have an influence at the margins or beyond? No, I think we change, shift the conversation. You know, I, I was talking to an MPP the other day who didn't really understand what a heat pump was. You know, so that to me says, okay, Ashlyn, if you want heat pumps to become a norm in Ontario, my work begins that if I'm sitting down at the cafeteria table with any MPP in the house, I want to check in with them about our shared values, right? So a lot of politics goes on behind the scenes when we're trying to move forward the agenda, make amendments, um, build support for something that maybe it doesn't get recognized as our idea, but gets incorporated into other policies. So I think we, we say punch above our weight. I didn't know that. So you're not allowed to drink coffee in the ledge? No, no snacks. Okay. Really. Yeah. Huh. So you gotta come ready. Yeah. You've got to be, you yeah. be satisfactorily caffeinated before you get in that chamber. Or get in the back room and <laughs> have your snacks there while you watch TV. Right. It is one of the traditions of this place that when a new member gets elected, uh, at some point the Premier either writes them a letter or comes over and shakes hands or something like that. Mm -hmm. That happened? Yeah, we said a hello when I, when I joined. You did? Yeah, and then since then people have been kind of hopping over and saying hi. So I, people have been pretty friendly and you know in our little gaggle of independence people kind of give me tips and cheer me on you know so yeah do a billion dollar reno here yeah holy smokes get voted in just to move down the street that's it well <laughs> do, you, do you know where they're gonna move i don't know anything no, no. yeah because i gather they're looking at a bunch of different properties <laughs> what do you remember about the day you were sworn in uh, just, yeah, people's friendliness, like lots of people coming over, looking forward to working with me and, you know, a lot of kindness, you know, I know we, we, you know, if people go to question period, they should see 
that there is a lot of back and forth, which I don't think is great for our profession. Uh, but at the same time, there's another side to those things that, mm. you know, people are other, many kinds of people outside of that moment in time. Oh, this feels so fantastic to double the Ontario Green Caucus and to know that I've got a friend in the house sitting right next to me. She is going to be right behind you, isn't she? She will be right behind me, absolutely. And I think the two of us are going to make a perfect team together. I went to your swearing in and I'm going to show you the thing oh. that stays with me. Okay. Because I snapped a little picture. Oh. Sweet. And here's the picture that I remember very well. You're gonna make me cry. Oh! <laughs> That's my kids, yeah. You look like you're having a bit of a moment there. Yeah, I feel like I really admire Jacinda Arden <laughs> from New Zealand. She's like just herself, you know, I want to be authentic and I cried during my inaugural speech. I'll probably cry again. <laughs> to my partner, Ryan. I know we're all making sacrifices for me to be away from you and the kids. I hope I make you proud by sharing all your nerdy optimism, taking the solutions you share with me that are in full swing across the globe and to push for a green economy that you believe in. To my kids, thank you for breaking my heart in ways I never knew possible. I will work as hard as I can to ensure that you and all the children of Ontario will have a chance for a healthy future with a roof over your head and all the tools you need to thrive. It's okay to be tender. To my fellow MPP. I think as a social worker and as a person, as a kid, like, you know, pull up your socks, don't feel certain things, but I think I am an emotional person and I think there's some wisdom there. So, yeah, I'm going to lean into that. I hope to enter this chamber and to every interaction with humility and compassion and sometimes a joke. I'm Irish. <laughs> you got elected in a by-election, which means you're not going to serve a full term before you have to go back to the people and get them to either bring yeah. you back or not. Yeah. So you got two and a half years. Is that a bit daunting? It's a blessing and a curse. It's tiring, but it's important. Like, I've met a lot of people, and as a city councillor before that, I was in touch with different stakeholders. I was representing people. People saw the work that I was doing. So. Uh, while I do want to continue to always earn and the respect and trust of Kitchener Centre, uh, I think I've built a bit of a foundation. And I, luckily with the Green Party, I think we, we really work really hard to show that we have integrity. We stick our neck out on issues and we're really connected to our community members. So, so complete the following sentence for me then. <laughs> My time in politics, however long it lasts, will have been worth it if... What? We show some leadership on climate and equity. I think we need to point our ship in the right direction for future generations. And right now, the gap between rich and poor and the gap between where we need to be with our transition, we're, we're not there. So that's hmm. where I want us to point our ship. You know, Ashlyn, someday, regardless of how long you serve here, you've won an election. Someday, your name's gonna be engraved up on the wall here like so many others. What do you think of that? Well, I'm sure we all grew up and your mom was like, don't color on the wall. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible. You know, it's, uh, I'm humbled by it. Like I, I didn't get into this gig because I'm looking for power or riches. I got into this because I really felt like I had the courage to represent my community for, um, for those reasons. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a real honor. Thanks for the time. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.